Well, you you're absolutely correct. That is a, a matter that is very 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 serious. Um, yesterday, I visited the the the, 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 the scene of, of of the crime. Unfortunately, the lady, the the the, the house was closed, and the family had left, had left the residence. But I met a toddler who was in the house at the time. It was a very moving time to speak to her. But she, she was in high spirits. She has very high spirits. And she, it was really moving <clears throat> to speak to that toddler. Um, she and, in fact, two toddlers, one of them was, was in the house, I understand. And it was rather, rather moving. But the, 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 the child showed the strength and the resilience that is remarkable. Um, next steps are we have to do some serious social intervention in, in that area. But before we do, but whilst we do that, there is need for enforcement. There can be no excuse for that level of criminality. There can be no excuse for it. And sometimes I wonder why people seem to want to make excuses for, for, for people who commit these kind, that, that heinous crime. The government is going to embark on a serious process of social, of more social intervention. We are going to try some crime reduction strategies. We are already speaking to some people uh, uh, about doing that. But in the meantime, we have to wipe out that criminality. That criminality must stop. And I make no excuses for it. I'm going to say to you, the government will use all the resources the police have been instructed to use all available means within the law, all available legal means to wipe off that criminality in this country. And we make no bones about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you that the social intervention will continue, but the community outreach will continue. But this animalistic behavior cannot be tolerated and we can make no excuse for it. And I'm going to say it again, the police have been given the instructions to use all legal means necessary to wipe out that brutality that seems to be happening by a small, by a small section of the community. I was in V4 yesterday and the community is, is still very embracing and, and, and very hopeful. But it's a small, a small part. And I don't want us to stigmatize any part of the country. I don't want us to, to, to pretend that the whole of Viewfort or the whole of a, a particular area in Viewfort is, is what, what you like to call a crime hotspot and things. It's unfortunate, just a few people. So we are hoping that the message is clear the message is clear. Social intervention, the community outreach, the empowerment will continue, but the criminality must stop and all legal means will be used to wipe out that criminality, legal means. Um, in terms of the habitat of these residents, is there, is there fear? Is there, is there there Some of them, of course. Of course, they, 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 of course, people, um, and, and, and it, it was very, it's, I mean, sometimes we like to, we like to think of it from a, sensation, um, from a sensationalizing point of view, we sensationalize it, but make it a, sens a sensation, but really, it, it's moving, right? it, it, it's, and, and if you go, then you have to go there to, to feel it yourself, feel these people have to leave their homes, these people are custom of being in their area, have their own community situation, they have to leave it, it it's, it's, there is a level of, of trepidation and fear. That, that is true. Prime Minister Jeremiah Joseph from the Chess. Before even said and done, sir, um, do you believe that the strategy that the police is using is not working? I don't know if the strategy, strategy you know, and I know sometimes the, the people who want to politicize that situation see things that are really not. Not uh, particularly not true. Yesterday, in 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 Kentucky, there was a mass, there was a massacre, 
I mean, I, mean, I, I know we, we can't compare Kentucky to St. Lucia, but could, would you say that, what, what was the reason for that? The police will never be able to police every inch of territory in this country. Never. They have never done, they will not be able to. I think the police, they tell me, are trying their best. The police, most of them are committed to the cause. So I'm not going to blame the police. And I think we have to stop this blame game. We have to blame the criminals. All of us must begin to blame the criminals. And, 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 and our reporting must blame the criminals. But we're looking for all, we mustn't look for all kind of excuses, particularly those who try to use political excuses. This is a situation where criminals, the people who are committing these crimes, are criminals. And I make no bones about it. And the police must deal with them as criminals using all legal means. So how do you hope that um, St. Lucia will recover from this incident? St. Lucia will recover. St. Lucia is recovering. St. Lucia, I, I'll tell you something. We, we, we just, we are doing very well. St. Lucia is recovering. Yesterday at the, at the Carifta Games, we won eight gold medals. There are young people who are doing things. Why are we focusing on what you think is, is, is only bad news? Yesterday, eight young people won gold medals, including Miss London from, 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 from the same view for itself that, that, that we're speaking about. Miss London is from Viewfort South. She won a silver medal in the 200 meters. There's, there's Naya Jules who won a gold medal in, in, in the pool vault. Uh, uh, two silver medals in, 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 in the pole vault. There is the young Desta. So St. Lucia is, there's Mr. Phillips. St. Lucia is, why aren't we, I mean, it, it, it's, what's happening is, is sad, it's unfortunate, but why are we only looking at, looking at the glass half, half empty? So St. Lucia is recovering. We just had you, we're going to have an exciting, exciting things in the policy statement in April. St. Jude, working in St. Jude is, is continuing. So there are exciting things happening. So whereas, what's up? The crime is, is horrible. We're concerned about it. But let's don't look at the glass half empty all the time. It's, it's not good. So what message are you going to send out there for the general public and send to assure them? I can, I can give the, the message I am putting out to the public is the government using all the necessary resources available to wipe out the criminality. And I'm calling on the public and the press and the commentators and the social and, and the social commentators to use their best efforts to assist the police to write to ensure that this criminality comes in. That's the message I'm saying out. All the resources, all hands on deck, everybody. No time for excuses, no time for name calling. Everybody, let's get together to deal with it. Next topic. That's the message. Oh, I'll, 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 one more question on this topic. Yeah. Go ahead. That's fine. Okay. Um, I was asking just for a general update on um, the RSS intervention because I think um, we had requested some more. Um, yes, the RSS is, is here. The, 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 RSS, the RSS is here. They are deployed and they will be here at least for the next another three weeks. How many? I'm not sure. I think possibly, possibly between 40 and something about 40 or so. But the, the, the RSS are here and they're embedded with members of the police service. Well, Minister, mm. the economy right now, you said that we are seeing some growth. I think, well, can you just tell us what's happening with the economy? <laughs> what's happening with the economy? It's growing, comrade. In the economy, we, we are doing, and you see what's happening? We had, a, we had a surplus on our primary account. And the statisticians tell me that in, in, by, by when we get a policy statement in April, there'll be better news. And did you read that the IMF is saying that the world economy is in a perilous state? That's what the IMF is saying about the world. You see, we want to isolate St. Lucia. We try our best to isolate St. Lucia. But the whole world economy is in a state where we have to be concerned. But St. Lucia... It seems that St. Lucia, and I've made the point, we are doing reasonably well. There are some downsides, but we are doing reasonably well. And I hope that this continues. We are, we, we, we are expecting growth this year. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Um, it, is, it was with much um, optimism that the youth agency was yes. on last week. And to coincide with youth month. Mm -hmm. But you said that it's going to spread... Yes. So, so in this initial stage, 
what would be some of the, um, you know, the, 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 the development, the progress to that? Well, first of all, I'm told that the, 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 the year is doing very well. Mm, hundreds of requests. The office is busy. Um, they're very excited about it. The young people are very excited. Things are happening. People, you from all sectors of the, of the society are coming. And I'm speaking to the Minister of Commerce. Hopefully, after the policy statement, we will be opening an office in in Viewfort. For you asked me for what's happening in 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 the economy. Ten million dollars for small and micro enterprises. Ten million dollars loan funds and grant funds. Never before in the issue of solution. Never. That's happening in, in the economy, Jerry. That's happening in the economy. That's happening in the economy. So that's that's that's, that's what's happening now. And the youth economy. We move the office to to Viewfort. Part of the office for commerce and things. I don't know if you remember last year, um, the, the correctional officers at the Model 8 had you know, staged some form of action because they were dissatisfied with um, things that were going on in the place. I know the government had um, done a review and then when Gad was brought in. Um, according to them, some of those issues are still persisting. Like I know they had made requests for radios and these sort of things to help with their operation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's work in progress. Um, we are doing... Actually, the issues about the fencing and the locks that, 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 that that's happening. I know they're working on in, on, on increasing the, the the wave band, the the ability for them to have cases from 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 the the uh, facilities. Work in progress. And in the policy statement, we'll make a few more pronouncements on it. But you're right. Yes, it all hasn't happened, but it's happening slowly. But, but work in progress to improve the situation. And you must have noted that the, the, the place has quieted, hasn't it? You agree? Yeah. It's quieted, yes. That's... But I spoke to them, not, so I just yeah, yeah, yeah. But tell them, yeah. tell them, tell them that it's work in progress and we've seen about them. Oh. All right. Um, gen gentlemen, you must have, and lady, sorry, you must have, it's, it's, I don't think it's, it's right that I allow um, lies, especially in these days of when we have a an, an heightened activity as far as guns is concerned. I don't think it's, it's right for a responsible political party seeking to be in government to blatantly spread such falsehoods. And I think it, it, it's my duty as Minister of National Security and the one targeted in, 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 these, in these falsehoods to, to inform you about the appointment of the Fire Licensing Board. Um, the file licensing board is a creature of an amendment to the Firearms Amendment Act. And it comprises, and in part A, it was an amendment to, to, to the act that was passed in the, in the House of Parliament. So it, it wasn't a secret, it was debated in Parliament, and the amendment to the act was an act was done in the Parliament in open season. The records of Hansard will show you that. And it says that on the section 2A, there is established a firearms licensing board. The members of the board are the commissioner of police or his or her nominee, the permanent secretary in the ministry responsible for national security, three persons nominated by the minister and approved by the cabinet who are of high integrity and are able to exercise good judgment in fulfilling the functions of this act. That these were the people on the fire arms licensing board. These are the people by an act of parliament. And the, the cabinet conclusion pursuant to section 2AC of the Firemen's Amendment Act, the following people were appointed for a period of two years. Mr. Severin Moshery, former Commissioner of Police, Mrs. Rumelia King, a counselor, Mr. Samuel Bryce, a businessman from Viewfort, and the commissioner. And that board has not approved one license. That board has not approved not one license, not one. You understand? The, so it is a complete falsehood. And I and I and I, I think these things ought to be called out. I'm not telling you, you I'm not telling you your job. It's a complete falsehood. So see that and to impugn improper motives on these people of such you see, it's okay to take pot shots at me. But to involve 
innocent citizens, citizens who just want to make a contribution, to tell the public, to tell millions of people that these people are corrupt and they're involved in bribery, etc., is wrong. We can't allow politics to put us in that situation. And I, and, I don't, and then it's something that you can't tell me everybody does it. That, that's not true. Truth is truth. These are blatant lies. These are not innuendos. These are lies, falsehoods, misinformation, worse than fake news, aimed at destabilizing the country, aimed at putting the country in a situation where you, we know that there's an issue relating to guns in the country. But you are insinuating, you are a responsible political party, but you are insinuating that guns are being given being given through legal channels by corrupt means. That can't be right. So I just want you to be clear so you can report if, you, if, you, if you're so minded that this is the truth. And, if, and, and, when, and when you report that, you're not doing any government propaganda. You are stating the truth because you can go in the handstand, you can look, look at the act, it's an amendment to the firearms, the firearms, it's an amendment to the firearms amendment. Act. Secondly, the other falsehood is the situation as it deals with the residence in Washington of the ambassador. You must have heard that the government, in self-subsidizing bread, which is again a falsehood, we subsidize flour, we subsidize flour, the government is spending a million dollars on an ambassador's residence. You've seen it, you saw that yourself, right? Let me tell you the truth. The truth. The government, for many years, almost decades, had bought a building in Washington to house the ambassador. The building was bought by the government. The building existed. It was there. Between 2015 and 2016, the, re the, the residence is located at 60, 6041 Crimson Court, McLean, Virginia. That's where the residence is located. It belongs to the, the people of St. Lucia. Between 2015 and 2016, the ambassador lived in the building. Prior to that, Ambassador, ambassador Johnny, who was our ambassador, and Ambassador Dr. Lewis, occupied the official residence. That is the building that is there already. The new ambassador is the new ambassador did not occupy the building, the residence, but US $4,000 a month rent was paid for him. 4,000 US dollars per month was paid for him. For the ambassador. For the, for the ambassador at the time did not occupy the residence. That is before the ambassador that's here now. Did not occupy the residence and $4,000 US was paid rent for him. The building remained unoccupied and as as usual, unoccupied buildings deteriorate. 80,000 US dollars were spent between 2017 and 2018 to effect repairs on that building. 80,000 US dollars was used to effect repairs on that building. All the documents are available for scrutiny. The ambassador did not move into the building at that time. So the building remained unoccupied and left to the weather of Washington. The present ambassador, the government is paying rent for the present ambassador of $5,500 per month because the building is not fit for her to occupy. This meant that between the former ambassador and this ambassador, the government 
has paid up to this day, the government has paid about 1.4 million EC dollars of rents. So we decided that it is better to fix the building and the documents are there for the contractor at a million dollars EC and let ambassador move into the building then allow the building to deteriorate and continue to pay rent. That is a story on the ambassador residence. Let me tell you something further that you may not know. The government of St. Lucia owned Pat was part owner of a building in Washington where the OECS occupied, OECS offices occupied, except Grenada. The government, the government in August 2019, before COVID, sold their share of the building for one million US dollars. Sold it. You, you may want to ask the Minister of Finance what they did with that money. They sold it. And then they rent, they rent office space in, in Washington, $7,821.66 US per month for the office space in, rent in Washington. And they sold their share in a building that they occupied. No, it is theirs. It is owned. They chose to sell it to parent. So that means that in Washington, as we speak, we are paying 13,000 US dollars in rent for residents and an office when we owned a part share in one and we owed totally another. That is the financial management that this country experienced. Was there any reason for, for that? In, in, in 2019, I was in opposition. <laughs> so, you know, it is very important that, that these things are put in the public domain because we have a lot of talk going on in the place, a lot of self righteousness, self righteousness, mea <laughs> culpa. You understand? All these things. And these are, these are the facts. And these are verifiable facts. And I challenge anybody to say that that is wrong. It's a challenge. So right now, we are paying nearly $13,000 in rent buildings that we had. We have one that is deteriorating, and we had one that we sold. So, that, that, so these are the stories on, on rent. An ambassador's residence. Yeah, yes. You see, that is the 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 the, 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 the that that's the position. So what's happening that we are paying rent for people. Some of them stayed in their own residence. You're paying rent for them to stay at stay at home instead of repairing the building that exists. So the million dollars that we have is to repair the building to stop us from paying 5,500 US dollars in rent. Okay. And I could give you a copy of all of this. And if you want, you could get the entire document. The $80,000 that was spent, the entire document. Because when we speak on these matters, we do not speak innuendo. Because our job is to inform the public. And there are several other things that we can inform, we have informed the, the, the public on, like nearly 3,000 pounds per, per, per night in, in a hotel. Situation that we can give the documents. We, these are not things that we are just saying. The documents are available to be seen. But, but, you know, we seem sometimes not to understand the gravity of that situation and we go for of this situation, but, but that instead we deal with the hype and the, and, 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 and the bluff of, of uh, uh, other things. So, so Jeremy, yes? Point of clarity, um, Prime Minister, Kishore choice you mentioned that um, the part ownership of the OECS building that we sold um, for one point something. One million US dollars. dollars. Right, and then we were renting out for over 7,000. 7,000 dollars, yes. Um, we are, not we, we are. Oh, so then my question is, with the, the um, 
restoration of the building? Are we going no, it's only a residence, so we're not paying, paying rent for the residence, yeah. Okay, so would we... We, we have to continue to paying rent. Them? No, they can't. It's the situation, uh, you know, these spaces, you, do, you can't build offices everywhere. They are, these spaces are zoned. So the residence, the residence is in a residential area. The office can't go there. No. Uh, Two different properties. We're yes, yes I, was, I was asking whether we were going to... No, we can't. That, that, that you're making up, we can't. We can't move an office into the residential area. You know, it's zoned. And, and basically, it, it was a, it, it, it's a very nice house. It's a house that was owned by Alexander Haig, a former U.S. Secretary General. That's a house that the government said we should allow to deteriorate. And the question is, we, we supposed to have spent 80,000 U.S. dollars in it. So that, that is why you see a million dollars in the budget to repair this residence, which is about, I think, less than 200,000 U.S. dollars, so the ambassador can move in, so we can stop paying the rent. That is a story on the residence. So, you surprised, gentlemen, men and lady? There are many more things to, to surprise you, you know. Okay. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be surprised. There will be many more things, I can, I can assure you. There are a lot more surprises, but the thing is that sometimes we seem to be so um, hell-bent on that we don't see the surprise. There are many things surprise you. There are many, many. And you know, the problem is, if people say, why don't you all say that? You know, we in government, we have a country to run. So we don't go into the blame game, the blame game. We have a country, we have a serious country to run. And we have serious issues to, to deal with. So we allow all these things to slide, like fuel prices. Like, we allow these things to slide because we have to run a country, a country that was left in a, in a complete mess. A country where not one hotel was built in the last five years. Not one. A country where there will be no significant foreign investment for the last five years. A country that left us with no hospital after more than $300 million was spent. A country that would have left us with a billion dollars worth of debt as far as an airport is concerned. That is the country we, we inherited. A country that cancelled a loan to construct the four-lane highway and right now creating gridlock, creating gridlock, creating loss of productivity because a government that does not want to go for a tendering process. This is a country we have to run. This is a country we have to run. So we don't have the time to get involved in all this. A country that destroyed a, destroyed a custody suite where there is no place to put in prisoners when you arrest them. That's a country we have to run. That's a country that left policemen in a state of complete inhuman conditions at the Grosley Police Station, where from 2016, funds had been approved. From 2016, funds had been approved, and the money was available to build a new police station. That is the country we have to, we have, that's the country we have to run. So we have work to do. So you must excuse us if you don't get involved in the answering back and all this. this you must excuse us. Thank you very much.